Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Colossians. 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 Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. As the occasion is, you may be expecting or you may know what the topic's going to be. Colossians chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 15 through 17. Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. The title of the message is, Be a Thankful Person All the Time. Be a Thankful Person All the Time. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Brother Nathan, can you please pray for the message? And also thank you for the trials and the troubles that you give us. Without the trials and the troubles that you give us, we really, really, we really wouldn't know what it means to put our faith in you, to trust you through it all. Father, I pray that you be there for this sermon. I pray that you speak to Pastor Chetty. Help him, Lord, give him the words what you say, Lord, and change us, Lord, direct our hearts so that we may keep our eyes and our hearts and our minds focused on you and on you alone. I pray all this in Christ Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Be a thankful person all the time. We all know that as a Christian, it is a command to be thankful in all things. You have to be thankful for everything, whether it's good or bad. And during the Thanksgiving week, it is especially important for you to recognize and realize what kind of a person you are. Are you a thankful person or are you not? Are you a thankful person only during the good times? Are you a thankful person during the bad times as well? You're going to go through trials. You're going to go through sad times. You're going to go through you know, times where you wish you were in heaven many times, whether it's through financial situation, whether it's through health situation, whether it's through relationship situation. Many times when you go through hard times or hardships and trials, you forget to be thankful. And that's true human nature. Why? Because you and I are very selfish. When it, things do not go our way, we tend to just blame it on everyone else. So, I mean, characteristic of an unthankful person is always is someone else's fault. Within the family, you'll see. It's your fault. It's your fault. But it's never my fault. It's your parents' fault that you're not rich. It's your parents' grandfather. So your grandfather's fault, your grandmother's fault, that you don't have nice stuff. And people start complaining and complaining and complaining. When it should be a time of thanksgiving, which should be every day, people are just complaining. And I'm not talking about just worldly people. I'm talking about Christians. Right. So many Christians, you think you are entitled because you're saved. I mean, the only thing differentiate you and the world is that you're not going to hell. That's it. You have everything else. I mean, you're going to have trials in life. Just because you're saved, you're going to be prosperous, just like everybody preaches nowadays. Because you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior does not mean that you're going to be a millionaire within a year or two. You probably may lose everything if you expect it that way. And the Lord wants you to recognize that you got to be thankful for the fact that you're saved from hell. I mean, as Christians, we have many simple things that we need to be thankful for. I mean, obviously, first thing is salvation. I mean, you have to be thankful for your salvation. It's rhetoric, it's a cliche to a point because so many people make it that way. They make it seem like that's like nothing. You know, they don't concentrate on the first thing that saved you from hell, which is by trusting Christ. And through his blood, you're saved, but you forget. And then you worry about everything else. 
You worry about, you know, my children, you know, my job, you know, my health. But you never are thankful for the first thing that you should be thankful on a daily basis, which is your salvation. If you don't do it, then everything else is always messed up. You know, we use this illustration a lot. You know, if you want to set the puzzle right, you know, you have the first few puzzles have to fit correctly. Rest of them, you know, wouldn't matter if first few do not fit correctly, if it's not in the right place. You have to be remembering what Christ had done for you. I mean, number one thing is that he shed his blood on Calvary and died for you. So if that's not a reason for you to be thankful, then you have no reason to be a thankful person. Then how are you different from the whole world? How are you different from the rest of the world? How are you different from this, all these complainers and murmurs out there? When you do not give thanks to God, then you're same as though any worldly person out there. Yeah. Simple as that. There's no difference between you and, say, you know, some sinner, unsafe sinner out there who always complains and murmurs. So number one thing is that you have to be thankful because you don't want to end up like the world. Simple as that. Amen. As a Christian, if you are not thankful all the time, then don't differentiate yourself from the world. What's the number one characteristic of the world? Full of complaints and murmuring. Simple as that. Right. Why everybody has a one common theme. They always have something to complain about and murmur about, yeah, right? True. Whether it's your politician, whether it's your wife, whether it's your husband, whether it's your children, whether it's your cousin, you know, anybody, you name it. Yeah. People always have something to complain about. Amen. That's why people can have conversation, unfortunately. Wow. They have a specific person or thing or event they want to complain about. Simple as that. Yes. I mean, to a fault, right? Conservatives, right? <laughs> you, you always complain about the election result <laughs> nowadays, right? Yeah. I mean, it's true or not, you know, everything's in God's hand. Amen. And what's done is done is done, yeah. right? I mean, you just go with what God has provided for you. And young kids, I don't know how young kids, you know, survive this day and age without being so worldly, because everything's just so bad. I mean, if you say anything against, you know, homosexuality, you're like, well, what do they, what's the term they call? You're canceled. I mean, everybody's canceled nowadays, and everything's so politically correct. If you say anything against transgender, you're canceled, right? right? And what is it? If four or five-year-old needs to agree with transgender, you know, homosexuality, I mean, we're talking about four or five-year-old kids. Yeah, they have no understanding. Yeah. Well, you brainwash them, and if they say no or anything, and then you see them as, you know, cancelable items. I mean, that's how wicked the world has become. Yeah. However, you're no different than those world if you're not thankful. All those things happen. Why? They're complaining. This little kid is complaining. You know what? I don't want to be a man. When I grow up, I don't want to be a man, you know? So, okay, society goes, okay, then be a woman, you know. I don't want to marry, you know, opposite sex anymore, right? You know, they hurt me, you know. I have bad relationship with them. I mean, we do have a special cases, you know, case by case. But you're not created to be like that, right? Amen. So you complaining to the world and your creator and everybody that, oh, man, Lord, you know, opposite sex is not right for me, so I have to go with the you know, same sex. That is not how God made you. Right. That your complaint has put you in the gutter. And the Bible has like a full summary of it. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1. Because the world is not thankful to its creator, which is Lord Jesus Christ, it just continuously goes downhill. Yes. 
Romans chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 21. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. The Bible says, Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Because they weren't thankful, because they did not glorify God, what happened? They just went into their wicked imagination. And verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And then what are the results? Look at verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So it's against nature, right? Yeah. So homosexuality is against nature. Verse 27, Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. So as society becomes unthankful, Eventually, just like days of Sodom and Gomorrah, people leave their natural affection and go into homosexuality. People say, you hate homosexuals. I don't. Just hate the sin. We want all those folks to get saved. Amen. It, it's just the sin. That's the problem. Right. Just like adultery, lies, you yes. know, everything. But that sin is so wicked that God had to send down fire and brimstone mm. to destroy it. That's right. yes. Amen. I mean, if you think that's not serious, what do you think is serious? Yeah. If you are unthankful and eventually the society gets to that part where they're so depraved and they're so, just like the Bible says, you know, because of their vile affections, it becomes to the state where everybody needs to accept homosexuality, you know, transgender, all those things. I mean, those do happen, you know, at the latter times. Especially, it needs to be accepted because when you look at it, out of the whole population, out of 300 million or so folks in America, how many do actually agree with it, right? Mm -hmm. You think you go to the people in the South, Bible Belt? Do you think it will be accepted? No, it's just a, you know, smaller sections of the country, but it becomes magnified because of you know, media and everything right. else that's happening. Yes. What am I trying to say, right? When men are depraved, their end is the state that we see. Right. And all these things are being accepted. Sure. And what is the result of being unthankful this day and age? Children killing parents. Parents killing children. Can you imagine? Even during the 90s, you know, when I was growing up, or 80s, I was growing up at that time too. And some folks, you know, 40s and 50s, even early, say, you know, 2000, no one ever thought about killing their parents. I mean, there's always serial killers out there, but looking at the general, you know, public, they always have respect for their parents. Yes. Even if they were drunkards, right? Even if they weren't the best mom or dad, they appreciated the fact that, you know, through them, they came into the world. I mean, you know, we had a lot of deadbeat dads out there too, so some people don't even know who their fathers are. However, they didn't have in their heart to just go out there and kill them. This day and age, we hear this is common story, right? Some kid, you know, has a gun, and because their parents didn't give him what they want, money or video games or whatnot, and they just shoot him. Their grandma did not appreciate or 
you know, how they're behaving, and they shoot him. Man, the guy who killed like 20 kids, right? I think it was a Sandy Hook Elementary Massacre. I, mean, I think he killed like his family members before he went and just killed those young people. Why do those things happen? It's not about gun control. It's because they're unthankful. Right. I mean, your, your focus has to change. Just because people don't, people aren't allowed to have guns doesn't mean that there's not going to be any gun shootings. Right. Right. I mean, there's always a way to get illegal guns everywhere. Sure. Just like people can get illegal drugs. So whole emphasis of all this issue is that people are not thankful. If society were more thankful for everything all the time, it wouldn't be like this. And as Christians, you have to remember, am I a thankful person all the time? Or am I only thankful when I want to be? Because that will translate into your church ministry. How are you different from the world when you come to church and all you do is complain? Right? Man, the food isn't good enough, right? You know, where's Sister Yves' food today? You know? <laughs> Where? I mean, why don't you make your own food then, right? Yeah, bring your own food. Stop complaining. And you're like, oh, man. Why is it that, you know, pastor always makes us sit in the front, right? Even though I explained the whole thing to you, right? But you're always like, I'm playing like, ah, for the reason, you know. I, I mean, at school, I didn't want to sit in the front, you know. But man, at church, do I have to sit in the front, you know? I mean, complaining, complaining. Like, man, this one is always amusing, but it's one of the worst. Man, why didn't that brother and sister say hi to me? You know? They always complain about that. Okay, the person might not have seen you, right? The person might be going through some hard times, right? They don't want to open their mouth, right? right? And you're deep inside, you're like, man, I'm so important. How dare they not say hi to me? You know? How dare they not acknowledge me? I mean, we actually had those cases, and they left the church. Because they felt like people didn't say hi to them. I mean, if you have that kind of mindset, might as well go to places where they treat you like kings and queens, prince and princess, right? Just go there. You know, don't expect that from a Bible-believing local church. Because you are creating an environment toxic environment, chaotic environment, you know, confusing environment, which God detests. God hates it. So if you are thankful all the time, you won't be complaining anything that's happening in the church ministry as long as it's in the will of God. I mean, obviously, if I suddenly go out there and start, you know, committing robbery and stuff, <laughs> complain about me, right? You know, why am I still on the pulpit, right? You know? But, I mean, if I'm doing some witchcraft out there, hey, you know, complain about me all the time. Yeah, I mean, that's legitimate. But for church policy, for how the preaching is done and how the church is run, and the characters of people, you know, there's no reason to be complaining for the leaders, right? right. God uses people. Think about Moses. Moses had a fiery anger. Don't you think people complain about his, you know, fiery personality? Yeah, right. And those complainers were dead yeah. or God took care of them. Right. Because God uses people with different characters. Yeah, that's true. Every, nobody's perfect, you know yeah. it. I know it. I sin. Hey. You sin. Everybody sin. Yeah. It's just that there's a role that God puts each person in. And you should never be jealous of that role, envious of that role, and you should have never look down on that role as well. Amen. What does that mean? I mean, we have, you know, Sister Maria, right, volunteers to, you know, clean up bathroom, right? I mean, who loves to volunteer cleaning up bathroom? I seen some stuff, man. <laughs> I don't even know why I saw those stuff. And 
People just don't flush all the time. And I had to witness it, I don't know, a few times at the church. And then I give all the you know, credit to folks who's cleaning it up. I mean, I cleaned it up in the past, too. I mean, I can't just let it sit there, you know. But someone's actually out there because they know. They're thankful that whatever I can do in the ministry, I can give glory to God and give thanks to God about. Whether it's picking up a trash, whether it's cleaning up even little things, when you have a thankful heart, God blesses it. And how do I know God blesses it? Because of your heart's attitude, I get blessed by it. When people are thankful, other people around you get blessed by it naturally. But when you're a complainer and murmurer, other people around you, they feel sick. They feel like I have a canker sore right next to me. And you know canker sores hurt, right? I don't know if you guys ever had a canker sore inside your mouth, outside of your mouth. It's very, very painful. And imagine the brother talking to you, sister talking to you, is just creating that canker sore to get bigger and bigger. But that's what's happening inside the church with all the complainers and murmurs in the church about from the leadership all the way down to everything else and in between and the food and stuff. You should be just thankful. Imagine if we only had like a two things to eat for lunchtime, yeah. right? Seaweed and rice. And maybe bring some, bring some soy sauce, right? Still good. Well, I mean, siriracha sauce, right? Oh, yeah. it's, uh, it's in demand, right? You can't find yeah. it anywhere. You just have sauce, rice, and something. Would you not be thankful? Come on. Amen. Would you be? I mean, think about it. Just, give, just think about your first reaction. You're like, where's that meat? You know? <laughs> or where's that other stuff, right? Where's... I mean, we have, like, how many, like, I don't know, 15, 20 different, you know, yes. dishes out there. Yes. And imagine one day, I'm like, you know what? Let's just give everybody just a rice and that's it, you know, with some salt. <laughs> People, you, you, you hear this, the place will go crazy, right? They're like, where's everything else, you know? That's the kind of heart that you and I have. We always want something more, and if it doesn't fit our criteria and our want, first thing we do, instead of thanking God for what you have and what you do not have, you complain to God right away. Then, how are you different from the world? How are you different from unsaved people out there? Many people don't want to get saved because you, me, we're the biggest complainers. Can you imagine? This person, you know, I mean, Brother Nathan witnessed to some guy, you know, because he came up to him because probably his character showed that he was different from others. But imagine if he was the same as everybody else, foul mouth, right? Complaining about the bosses all the time, complaining about the coworkers all the time, complaining about the shift all the time. I mean, this guy does graveyard shift. I mean, it's more than graveyard, right? If you work from like 10 to 10, you know, or beyond that sometimes. But if you don't complain and you're thankful for the opportunity, people see. And people, from what I understand, brother, like they reached out to you, right? The guy who got saved. He didn't even have to do anything. He wasn't the first one reaching out to them. God actually moved the other person's heart to reach out to him to get saved. And he got saved. And he was a Catholic. Think about it. Those things do happen if you are thankful. If you're not thankful, forget about it. Because many folks here and people who are listening, you go to work. And all you do is complain about this person, that person, and all that. I mean, and when you try to share gospel with them, they'll be like, what? What are you different from me? You complain about everything else. There are bad bosses out there, definitely, right? You know. But if God has given you that boss to work under, and until he gives you a better situation or better, you know, area to work out of, then you just accept and go on. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for strength to go on. Even students, too. 
You might get a hard teacher. Well, are you going to always complain? Man, my journalist, journalism class is so hard because teacher is so hard. Uh, he never gives nobody an A. And in my family, if I don't get A, you know, I get canceled. You know? <laughs> oh, man. That's what happens. Uh, I actually had a class where the dude goes, I'm not giving you A. <laughs> Beginning of the class. You know, I'm not going to give you guys A. I only give A's to you know, Harvard students. I'm like, OK. And I didn't get A in the class. So. I mean, he just flat out said it. I mean, that was before I got even saved, you know, and stuff. But there are people like that out there. I mean, but are you going to just complain about it, especially if you're saved? If I wasn't saved, if I was saved like the world, yeah. Complain is, you know, part of my plate. I'll just eat it. Man, that, that jerk professor, right? And then, guess what? Everybody's going to be understanding. Yeah, he's a jerk, he's a jerk, that jerk, that jerk, 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 you know. But what's that get to you, right? Nowhere. You just become a, you know, sore loser, right? Amen. You didn't get what you wanted. As Christians, we can't be sore losers in front of your own family, in front of your brethren, and in front of especially unsafe people out Amen. there. Yes. Don't ever fall into that pitfall. Because devil's going to always create it right next yes. to you. Because, man, when it comes to bad news and bad stuff, people get drawn to it. That's true. And you do not want to be entangled in that web. It might be true. Many times it might be true. But think about, would that bring glory to God by you saying those stuff? Come on. Unthankful stuff? Right. Probably not. Most certainly not, right? I mean, if they blaspheme against Lord Jesus Christ, yeah, you speak against it. They speak against King James Bible, you speak against it. Yes. But how many at work talks about King James Bible? I mean, be true, right? I mean, how many talks about salvation and all that stuff? You know, usually, you know, they don't like those religious talk at work, but they will talk about different stuff then you have to see your heart. Man, am I a thankful person all the time, or am I going to just go with the crowd and be unthankful? Because then this is going to be a result. Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. And we live in the days of apostasy, and this really clearly gives a picture of how the world is right now. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. And then we see in verse 2, unthankful as part of all these people being lovers of themselves. All these people, you know, in the times of apostasy. That just tells you, What? If you are not thankful, you are going to go into a gutter. Simple as that. Whether you're Christian or non-Christian, if you're not thankful, you're going to be in the toilet. Simple as that. And if you're not thankful, you're going to be shown. You're going to be that turd that's going to be still in the toilet. And people are going to find it. I mean, people are going to find you out that you're an unthankful, ungrateful person. And God forbid, if there are non-Christians who needed someone, some good example, to lead them in the right way, and then God gave you an opportunity to lead them in the right way, but because you were so foolish and always wanting your own pleasures in your life, then what happens? They lose that opportunity. And their blood will be on your hands and at the judgment. That's why... Like, as I mentioned, the first point 
you have to be thankful because world is not thankful. You want to be different from the world. And secondly, why do you have to be thankful? Without saying, because it's God's command. Let's turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You're like, ah, oh, why do I need to be thankful all the time? Because God told you so. And that's it. I mean, that's the best answer to anybody, right? You're going through your health issues. I mean, I feel really bad. I mean, because I know that my wife has been going through it for two years plus, and everybody else, some people have been going through many, many years with your health issues, right? I really feel for you, brethren. But even during those days, you have to be thankful. I have to be thankful to God, right? Even though my wife is sick and going through those things, I have to be thankful to God. What am I going to do? Am I going to complain and murmur? God, why did a healthy person have to turn out like this, not being able to do what she was able to do in the past? I mean, that's probably a natural reaction of a human being. But however, that's not what God wants. Look at verse 18. First John chapter 5, verse 18, Bible says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It's a command. God said, be thankful through the bad and through the good. Whether you're sick, whether you're healthy, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, you have to give thanks to God. Amen. I mean, that's God's will. Yeah. And it's the, one of the hardest things to do as a Christian. Because if you're not close to God, what happens? You're close to your flesh. And your flesh is the biggest complainer ever. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Literally, even right now, if you let your flesh take control over you, you're like, man, when will this preaching finish? <laughs> What's for lunch? Right. Your, 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 your imagination, your, your mind is going everywhere else except focusing on the preaching. I mean, you're not thankful for anything. But if you truly understand 1 Thessalonians 5.18, then you understand Romans 8.28. Let's turn to Romans 8. Verse 28, God gave you so much encouragement. Amen. God has taken care of you, yeah. and God has saved you from hell. You, and God Lord. said, you know what, I'm going to, no matter what happens, I'm going to provide your need. Amen. I mean, how can you not be thankful for whatever situation you're in? Romans 8, verse 28, the Bible says, and this is written to save Christians. You and I, if you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, Romans 8, 28, the Bible says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. The Bible says all things. Did it say good things? Did it only say bad things? The Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are they called according to his purpose. These are the people who saved. Saved Christians. So whether if you're going through Certain things, sometimes it's because of your sin. Sometimes it's because God wants to get glory from you so that you'll be a good testimony to others. The Bible says all things work together for good. Man, that's tough, but that's a great verse to hang on to. Yes. That's a great verse to be your life verse. I mean, that's, one, that's like my life verse. Why? Because life is not as, you know, straight as you want it to be. It's not as smooth, right? Especially as you age, as you grow up, as much, and especially if you want to do something for God, devil's going to take you harder and harder. Then you'll never have a straight road. You're going to have detours, you're going to have ups, and you're going to have downs. But through it all, you can give thanks to God because of verses like Romans 8, 28. Lord, you know, I'm going through such a hard time right now but I can still give thanks to you. I mean, it's your command, but more than that, from my heart, I know all of this will work together for good. And I mean, if you never experience it, don't try to empathize with people, right? You know, it's not even like, it's just, you should never be that Christian who have never gone through it and trying to judge people, right? right. You should never. That's a false humility. Hey, you know, I know, I know you've been going through some hardships, right? But I understand. You don't. 
So don't say such a stupid thing. Right. Yeah. Also, you broke in your leg a few times. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I just sprained a couple of times, you know. But I know exactly what you're going through. You don't. I'm like, oh, brother, man, you know, sister, I know what you're going through. Well, so you're broke? You know, you had zero cents in your bank account? You know, negative? Oh, no, no, I always had money in my bank, but, you know, I know what you're going through, you know. <laughs> oh, man. I'm like, hey, you know, someone's going through a real hard breakup. Yeah, I know what you're going through, you know? Did you have, you know, breakups in your life? No, 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 no. I, you know, I was blessed, you know. I met somebody and got married and everything's good now, you know. <laughs> I mean, and people think that that's actually encouraging other brethren. No, you're doing worse. You pray for them. Amen. That's it. Yes. I mean, it's better to not open your mouth sometimes. Amen. You know, I, some, I, I mean, I heard a story where someone dear to Dr. Ruckman, you know, and there someone passed away. Devastated. Dr. Roman just went and, you know, weep with that person, you know. Just weep together, that's it. He didn't say a word. Sometimes that's all you could do. Yes. I mean, if you feel other person's pain, right, I mean, you just weep together. You know, you cry together, that's it. No reason for you to say some stuff that, you know, it's not going to really help the other person. That's why when Lord says be thankful, you got to be thankful for everything, but as a Christian, you shouldn't be judging others, right? right? Who you feel like they're not thankful. Just pray for them. Amen. Right? Amen. It's not your job to be like, hey, I mean, of course, if you see little children, you know, acting badly, right? When they receive something and they're not thankful, you, you point it out, right? Yes. But adults, for different reasons and different circumstances that they're going through, don't be that person, right? Just because you're going through the good times, right? And then other person's going through the bad times, you're like, oh man, that bad time person should be thankful for everything. How do you know if you're going through the same situation? I mean, have you lost your wife in the past? I mean, some people are so ridiculous, a brother loses his wife for many, many years, and they think that, Hey, just get on with your life, man. Lord's going to provide you. If you need another mate, you know, just go on, man. Stop being sad. I mean, are you stupid? I mean, have you lost your wife in the past? If they didn't, they had that attitude, they're still stupid, right? <laughs> I mean, Amen. but usually people who go through those kind of, you know, very, very traumatic events in their life, they understand. Before they say it, they'll be like, hey, you know, brother, you know, take your time, you know. I mean, all I, only thing I could share with you is like Romans 8, 28, you know. God promises, right? Everything's going to be aligned, you know. Everything's going to work for good. If you need any prayer requests, brother, just let me know. You just go like that. Don't be someone who tries to give advice after advice after advice. To them, it's like poison. I'm already hurting, and that you're giving me poison on top of my hurt. I have all these sores out there. You're throwing salt, right? You're making me more hurt. But because you're my brother and sister, I'm not going to just explode on you, right? You know, I know better. But people who are not thankful for everything, they're only thankful for the good times, can never relate to people who's going through the bad times. That's why you must be thankful whether it's good or bad. Amen. You should be more thankful when it's worse. Yes. Amen. Right? Yes. Then you'll truly understand that you need the Lord. Amen. Because very few will truly thank God when they're going through the toughest times. Right. The human nature is just wicked. You know God takes care of you. You know God's inside of you. Yes. But you refuse to believe it. Mm. You know, Dr. Rockman said that God's cure for anxious care is constant communication with God. 
When you are in constant communication with God, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether God blesses you with a million bucks. It doesn't matter. God takes everything away. You're always thankful. You won't have any care in the world. Why? Because you know what God said in 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Your cares are on his hand. So if the Lord said, just like Job said, right? God gives us and God takes away. Same thing. But of course, you have to do your part. Don't go out of the context of the Bible and say that you're going to be blessed no matter what, right? We're not talking about those prosperity buffoons out there. We're talking about what the Bible says. The Bible says, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. You know God cares, right? I mean, who's going to care for you more than anybody in the world? Your wife? Your husband? Maybe. But someone who cares more for you than your husband and your wife, your mom and your dad, grandma and grandpa, and your daughter and, you know, your son. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. He cares for you. Then how can you not be thankful to him for every yes. little thing? That's why this Thanksgiving is a great reminder for both you and I. Man, sometimes we lose focus. All along, Lord was there taking care of us. But we're always looking at someone, something else, to fulfill our needs, right? And when those things do happen, you're like, oh, man, thank you, God. We're like a little too late, right? He already was taking care of it from the beginning, and once things go your way, then you thank God. What if it didn't go your way? Were you going to blame God? Because many Christians do. That's why, unfortunately, Christians who are bitter, I mean, they get cancer. Yeah, sure. Unfortunately, when someone is living a bitter life, their health deteriorates. Simple as that. When you have anxious care in your life all the time, then your health will go bad. Simple as that. When you cast all your care upon the Lord, then your health becomes better. As in, whatever you're going through, you know Lord's taking care of everything. I might not be able to get up today but I know I have peace because the Lord takes care of me. I might not be able to use my hand today, but I know the Lord takes care of me. It's like such a different view, right? I hate the Lord. I can't use my hand. I hate the Lord. I can't get up. Or you might not even say such a strong word like, hate. man, why, Lord, why, 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 why? How many of you guys are going through that right now? All you're saying is why to the Lord, right? Why is this happening to me? Why is this not happening to me? Why, 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 why? I mean, if you're always asking God for whys, you're never going to be thankful, right? I mean, you're always going to be wanting answers from God, the answer that you want, not what God wants to tell you. That's why it is very important for you to have a constant communication with God in order to be a thankful person. Guarantee you, because of my personal experience, when I don't have constant communication with God, I'm not thankful to God when things, bad things happen. I, I just don't. You know, I might not blame God, but I might blame everything else. Right? I might blame you, you. I might blame you know, my current situation. I'll just blame everything else instead of giving thanks to God. That's why it is very important. You have to check your current state Check your, you know, your temperature as a Christian, spiritual temperature, and check and see, do I have constant communication with God? If you do, then you are likely to be a more thankful person than those who do not have constant communication with God. Then what happens? Two, there's going to be two conclusion in your life. If you are thankful, Christian, then anything that happens in your life, you're going to have peace. According to Philippians 4, 6. 
If you're an unthankful Christian, then you'll never have peace, according to Philippians 4, 6. Because if you go to that verse, as we're going to go right now, everybody, to Philippians 4, 6, when you give thanks to God for everything, peace of God, which passes all understanding. That's why when some peop- sometimes when people see Christians, they just lost their wife and children, and they have peace. They just lost their you know, husband, they have peace. Why? Because of what the Bible says. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Then you accept it. You accept it gladly. If Lord allowed it, I'm going to thank the Lord for it. Simple as that. If Lord allowed this to happen, it's in his will, yeah, I'm going to thank the Lord for it. I'm going to be satisfied no matter what. And you're not going to look at any other. You're not going to look at someone next to you. You're not going to look at someone in front of you, behind you. Guess who you're going to look at the whole time? You're going to look at Lord Jesus Christ the whole time. That's it. Because whatever life throws at you, you know, someone who could resolve it and solve it is whom? Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. So that's why, man, I don't worry at all. This is what verse is saying. Why? Because I'm looking unto Lord Jesus Christ, and he's going to resolve it according to his will. If his will is that I go bad, I go bad. If his will is I go good, I go good. As in, you know, receiving good things, bad things, everything in between. And I'll have a perfect peace. Because whether I could get up or I can't get up, I'm going to look at Lord Jesus Christ. I'll be looking unto him for everything. And when you look unto Lord Jesus Christ, how can you not be thankful, right? You look at everything around you, you can't be thankful. Man, look at the world, man. I can't thank the world for nothing, right? But I can't thank the Lord for everything. And how am I going to be able to thank the Lord? By looking unto him all the time. If you want to be that Christian who's thankful person all the time, you have to look unto Lord Jesus Christ all the time. You have to communicate with him all the time. If you haven't, God gives second chance all the time, third chance. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all righteousness. That's the best part about being a Christian to me. I fail, I fall, I get right, and I get up. And I march on and continue. Let us all be a thankful person all the time. Remind ourselves during this Thanksgiving week. Let's pray.